Phishing emails try to fish for personal or financial information. Fishers are getting better every day at making their messages look more authentic. There are two main types of phishing emails. The first are emails that ask you to reply to the message with confidential information such as your user ID and password. Keep in mind you never want to respond to any email with confidential information. Washington University and other legitimate businesses will never ask for this information via email. The second are emails that ask you to click on a link to a web page which then asks you to provide confidential information. Many times these websites look like they're legitimate such as the Bank of America or PayPal but they're not and when you provide your user ID and password this information is then captured by the fisher who can then use it to log into a legitimate site. With over 260 million phishing emails every day, there's a pretty good chance one's going to end up in your inbox. Probably the easiest way to identify if an email is legitimate or not is to pay attention in the name in the from column. So here is an example of an email that was sent out to some people here on staff. The subject line was general web mail maintenance. But if you look at the from, there's nothing here related to Washington University at all. And if you look at the two, again, the domain doesn't show anything with Washburn. Sometimes by looking at the domain to see if it's actually linked to what should be the sender um, can determine if it's spam or not. Also, you want to pay attention to URLs in the email. Are they legitimate? Don't click on the URLs, simply mouse over them. Sometimes what shows as the URL that you're going to click on, when you mouse over it, sometimes it actually is going to show you where it's taking you. In this case it actually is the same link but sometimes they're spoofed as well. So they make you think that maybe it's going to take you to a website when it takes you somewhere else. Here's another clue that this email is a phishing email and that it's spam is based on the fact that there's nothing here related to um, Microsoft Exchange email like it claims it should be, nothing related to Washburn. That's a huge clue. And I'm going to show you a picture here of an email supposedly from PayPal. Here we see the from. It doesn't have just PayPal.com. It has dash Australia. That's kind of a clue that it's probably not actually from PayPal. They have a link in here and this is an example I was describing before. It has a link. Log into your account now but you don't know where that link's taking you. If you mouse over it then it will show you the link and this has nothing to do with PayPal. Especially when you see numbers here, just straight IP addresses, that should be a red flag. A common practice by many hackers is to use misspelled words on purpose. While it seems that it would be easy to reveal in a legitimate email, it's actually a tactic used to find less savvy users. So here's an example. You'll need to log in your account. There's no two. Um, another example here is a, a, a spam email where below is spelled with two L's. You also want to look at you know, the absence of logos. If this is coming from Facebook, where's the Facebook logo? I have a spam email here supposedly from Amazon and when I go through it there's no reference to any logo with Amazon. There's no contact to getting back with anyone. The links in this email have absolutely no reference to Amazon whatsoever. So those are huge signs. Plus here, the Amazon rewards at yournewgift-cardsurvey.us. There's nothing here after the right-hand sign of the at sign that says Amazon. So again, multiple clues. Sometimes an email will just have the entire message be an image and not individual text. One tactic that's commonly used for hackers is to alert you that you must provide or update your personal information or your account will be blocked or disabled or discontinued. This is a threat and this threat is not to be made by legitimate businesses or companies. It's, it's, it's a way for hackers to drive urgency so that you click on the malicious URL or download the attachment that's in the email High-risk attachment file types are .exe, um, zip files, .com files, .bat files. Do not click on any attachments that have that. If you're really questioning whether an email is legit or not and you really want to know, you can always forward it to the IT staff here at the law school and we can evaluate the email and get back with you on whether it's legit or not. 
If an email seems too good to be true, like this Amazon one saying, you know, you get $25 if you fill out a short survey, it most likely is too good to be true. Be cautious of any email offering a place um, to place money in your bank account or simply, you know, the links that say clicking here or you must click into your account. Now it's most likely a, a scam. Also keep in mind that these to and the from emails can be spoofed. They can appear to look like they're coming from a legit source, but really they aren't. So you can never trust what you're seeing on the from and the to address, and especially if your email is in the from address, it's a sign it's a fake email message. And keep in mind that during holidays and significant events, um, it seems that attackers heighten their activity during these times. Be cautious of what you're looking at in your email. Look at the to, the from, look for misspellings, Look for attachments that look suspicious. Look for links, mouse over them, and see where they're actually taking you. Um, a perfect example is um, one way to attack it, like what I did, was I went to Amazon.com. I did not click on this link, but I thought, you know, maybe they're offering some kind of survey. The best thing to do is if you do get an email from like PayPal or Bank of America asking you to change your password, if you're in doubt or you feel like, you know, maybe I should just as a security change your password, never click on the email and the message, but instead open up your browser and manually go to that website. Type in www.paypal.com and log into their site that way. I hope these tips help you when determining whether an email is legit or not.